Hey everybody, this is Derek, and this is a tutorial on how to extract information from a website using the freemium data scraping tool, DataMiner. Um, I often run into this problem at work where I need to get information off of a complex website, and I don't want to copy and paste um, with you know my mouse and cursor because the information that comes out of it is really messy, uh, it takes a lot of time to clean, it's time intensive, um, there must be a better way. Uh, generally speaking though, if you've got a website that's built off of a structured database, like a social media website or Wikipedia or something like that, then you'll find that um, the information that it displays is something that a machine can more easily read. So like, let's take a look at my, uh, my current Goodreads feed. You can see that each one of these posts that show up is structured pretty much the same way. There's a name up top, a book title, uh, a picture of a book, a description, and this repeats over and over and over again. Machines are really good at performing repetitive, detail-oriented tasks, better than humans. Uh, and this is why uh, people have created data scraping uh, tools. Rather than having a human pull this information off a website, a machine can be trained to look at the website, identify the key areas of information that you want to extract, and pull from it. So let's give that a shot now. Um, I'm going to go to a website called data-miner.io. And uh, I'm going to load it up in Chrome, and I'm going to click on Add to Chrome to download the Chrome extension. And I'll click Add to Chrome here, and authorize it to add the extension. You're basically giving DataMiner permission to like read the website as you're reading it. And you should get a window that pops up that says, hey, welcome to DataMiner. Uh, it'll point out that you have a brand new spiffy icon in uh, your browser next to your URL uh, space. It'll tell you how... Basically, data miner works, and then down at the very bottom, it'll give you the option to sign in with your Google account. And you're going to need a Google account in order to do this. Just go ahead and say OK and log in with your account. OK, now you should be all set up, and you can close this tab. I'm going to demo what it's like to pull off of my social media feed. Um, and I chose this site because it is a, a pretty well-structured site, and it's fairly simple. Um, and it hasn't really been designed to um, make data scraping difficult like some social media websites have been. Uh, let's start uh, by clicking on the icon right next to our browser. It says, oh, oh you better uh, restart the page because uh, you just logged in with DataMiner. No problem, we'll do that. And now it should be very friendly and say, okay, uh, here's your main screen. Now, sometimes if you go to a website, um, data miner has a list of public um, uh, uh, pre-made recipes, which is basically uh, the list of instructions that you can give uh, data miner in order to pull information from it. So uh, from a website. So in this case, there are a few uh, recipes that the public has already generated for uh, Goodreads. But we're interested in learning how to scrape ourselves, so we're going to go ahead and click here on to create a new recipe. And it'll pop up a little window on the side. Oops. All right. So now you'll see the start of a seven-step process. And bear with me because it's actually uh, fairly simple once you get used to it. The first thing you have to do is tell DataMiner whether you're dealing with a list page or a detail page. A list page is uh, probably the more common type of page that you'll have to analyze. It's when you have multiple rows of information. Uh, you want to extract multiple rows of information on the same page. It's when things are listed on a page, like posts on social media or um, products on Amazon. Um, a detail page is when you want to get all the details of a page to be extracted on one row. So like, say you click on a product on Amazon and then want to pull in the information that shows up on that one page. In this case, we're going to do a list page. The process is fairly similar, um, but you know, here's, here's how it works. So we select list page and then go to rows. Now, we're going to try to instruct data miner uh, to identify the, the content that we care about. 
Um, and remember, our ultimate goal with this process is to get an Excel spreadsheet um, out, of, out of this website that they were looking at. So what we're going to do is say, okay, each row on that Excel spreadsheet will be represented by a piece of content on this page. In this case, it'll be a post, an update post on Goodreads. Um, you're going to click the button Find to identify a row, and then it's going to instruct you to hover over the content that you care about uh, using your little selector tool. And you can see uh, that my mouse pointer has been replaced with a crosshair, and every time I hover over a different part of the website, it'll change color. Um, what Good reads or what a data miner is doing here is like looking at the code that makes the website and looking at the different components uh, and, and trying to find what it is that it thinks that I care about. In this case, I'm going to hover over the post that I want to extract and then I'm going to hold down on the left shift button or tap it once. That tells a data miner that this is the piece of content that I care about. And you can see that there's a little dotted line box that is now being drawn around the content. If I messed up and like grabbed this piece of content, uh, it's no problem. You can just tap shift again and move it around. All right, now let's look on the right hand side. It has identified a couple of different guesses about what it is that I might be looking for. There's element classes and there's HTML element types. It helps to know a little bit of HTML here, honestly. Um, but even if you don't, you can uh, fudge it by just clicking around on the different elements and seeing what you find. Let's first click on uh, the div clause and see what happens. Uh oh. All right. This, this is very, very busy and not at all what it is that we're looking for. So by clicking div, I basically told Data Miner to look for every single div. Um, line of code on the website. So if you looked at the HTML, it's pulling up every box, every little frame of possible information. This is way too much information. This is not what we're looking for. There's a whole bunch of extraneous detail. I'm going to unclick it here. Instead, I'm going to look here, and as luck would have it, um, there's a little um, piece of information called GR Newsfeed Item. Well, that actually sounds like what we're looking for, because this is a newsfeed. Um, we're looking for individual items. So let, what happens when I give this a click? Okay, now you can see that not only the first box that I selected, but each additional box following has been identified. This is what we want to see. Essentially, we've identified the piece of content or the type of content that we care about and that we want data miner to pay attention to. So um, I feel pretty good about this GR newsfeed item. Um, moving forward, there are a couple of things that it, it might not be so easy the first time, but this in principle is how this works. So I'm going to just click confirm and move on. All right. So it said, okay, I, I see 33 different rows here on this page. And as luck would have it, I think 33 uh, newsfeed items have loaded. So that's good to hear. Next, we're going to go on to the columns. Uh, if the row is the individual newsfeed item, the column is each facet of that newsfeed item that we want to capture. So it, let's, let's use this as an example. I first want to capture the name of, you know, my friends on Goodreads. I'm thinking about buying them books or something like that, right? So I, I'm going to start with a name and I'm going to say that I want to extract the text of the name. And this is the simplest piece of information that you can extract. If you want to, you can um, extract a URL. So if a name has a hyperlink to it, uh, you could get the, the, the website that you would go to if you clicked on the name. If the piece of content that you care about is an image, you could gra grab the image URL, that sort of thing. Uh, but we'll, we'll start it with just the name. Okay, um, we're gonna click find. And we're gonna go through the exact same process We'll, where we'll hover over um, the, the name that we're looking for. And now we see that we have a bunch of different options here. Uh, I could click GR hyperlink. No, again, that's, that's selecting a bunch of content that I don't care about or that I don't want to capture right now. The Prince and Knight is clearly the book title. Daniel and Hack, that's clearly the author. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for the stuff that shows up in this little box area right up here. So I'm going to unclick it. I'm going to try A. 
nope, this doesn't seem to work. Um, GR user profile link. Now that looks pretty good. It's user, that's what we care about. And if we click it and go down, we see that this, uh, <coughs> excuse me, username is repeated. So I'm gonna say yes, this is exactly what we're looking for. And I'm gonna hit confirm. Now, something interesting has popped up because it's previewing 47. And I seem to recall getting 33 rows. It might be worth checking to see what is popping up here. So I'm gonna click on preview, that little eyeball. And this actually looks pretty good to me. Um, it may be, yeah, it may be that as I scrolled down, I queued up more things to load. But that's okay, like what matters is that this is a preview of the content that shows up. So in the first row under name, my friend's first name will show up. Here we go, second, third. Um, this, this looks accurate to me. I think that this is what I want. Okay, next, I'm gonna get a new column. And this time I'm going to extract the book title. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry about that. Um, uh, I, again, I'm just going to get the text. I'm going to go find, hover over, and it looks pretty clear here. Book title link. Yep. Great. That's what I'm looking for. Hit confirm. And again, preview. Here's a list of book titles. Okay, this is going pretty well. What if we want to know whether our friend is looking to buy something or is currently reading it, right? Like if in our demo use case, we're trying to think of presents to buy our friends. It'll be useful to know if somebody actually wants to buy a book as opposed to if they've already gotten it. So we'll start another column. I will click find and hover over wants to read. And then we'll look at span. Okay, this doesn't look right. And it also is a little frustrating because it doesn't look like we have a lot of options here. If I'm clicking span, it's also showing buy. It's showing the Goodreads logo. It's showing a bunch of other things that are you know, qualified as a, a, an HTML tag span. Is there something I can do? Uh, one thing you can do uh, is mess around and choose this, choose a sibling element, basically try to find a nearby piece of content. And if I click up on this button, um, it'll, it'll make a guess at uh, the content and say, oh, maybe, maybe you meant this specific thing. Um, and in this case, clicking on choosing a sibling element um, seems to have isolated the piece of information that we care about. It's not perfect because um, it's also showing um, how a book rating occurred. And I have to tell you, at some points when you're scraping information, this happens and you say, okay, whatever, I'll clean it in post. I'm going to try real quick to see if I can isolate it even further. No, because now, now it's only selecting by in some area. I'm going to, I'm going to click no. Uh, I'm also going to try selecting a parent. No, that that doesn't seem like something I want either because that just gets me up to select more. So in this case, I'm going to accept a little bit of um, incorrect data. And let's just see what it looks like. Actually, this has us luck out pretty well because instead of... Um, is currently reading, instead of showing the, the stars rating for the book, because they're stars and because I'm just extracting text, I'm good. This is actually a pretty clean piece of information. All right, so this is, I'm gonna call this title action. I'm gonna do one more column just to demo the, the principle. And in this case, I want to, or actually maybe I'll do two. Um, book image. And in here, I'm gonna grab image URL, click find, hover over book title, and then GR book title, or book image, large, that might be what I want, yeah. And here I get a list of URLs, this is great. And then say that I want to get a list of um, URLs for books to go to. Um, I'll call this a book URL. And I'll extract the URL, click find, and now I'll hover over the thing itself. Nope, I'll go for book title hyperlink. Yes, okay, that's what I'm looking for. And this should give us a bunch of book hyperlinks. Great. Okay, but um, I want to be able to extract more information here. So 
this is this is the data that I'm going to get. I'm going to move on to step four and see what I can do. All right. Now, if I'm looking to uh, scrape multiple pages of information, that's another thing that I can do. Um, so this is particularly useful if you're like loading up um, a site that gives you like 10 results and then you have to load up the next 10 results and then you have to load up the next 10 results. That's useful sometimes. Um, that's not how Goodreads is structured, so I'm going to move on. Um, but generally speaking, the way you do it is you uh, click nav, you find the next button, select it, and then you can test that. Um, I can also say at this point I want to scroll to the end every three seconds. Uh, and this will get me some more information. Let's see if that works for me, because that seems to be the way the Goodreads loads. You scroll to the bottom, it thinks for a second, and queues up more content. So it behaves a little bit like Twitter in this case. You also have the option to load up JavaScript. I never actually run JavaScript, because most of the sites that I scrape are pretty simple. But you have that option as well. It's more of an advanced um, function. And then I say save. OK, so Goodreads book scrape and hit save. I'm going to run this recipe and see what happens. OK, so it's going to load up the initial page. And you can see that it's scraping. And it's moving down the website, reviewing things as it goes. And it's going to pull up information. Let's see what happens. Bam. OK. So it extracted 117 rows here. And I imagine that if I wanted it to keep going, I could continue scrolling down and load stuff up, or do the pagination, or try to find some repeating um, way to, to gather this data. Because I'm just showing you the, uh, the, the way that this information works, this, this script works, I'm just going to leave it here. But let's see, at the, let's see the, the data that we extracted. Here's a preview. We get a name, we get a book, We've got an action, we've got book assets, and we've got a book URL. We seem to be in pretty good shape. Um, OK, so I'm going to click Download. I can either copy this to a clipboard, or I can save as an Excel spreadsheet. Now, rather than open this that way, I'm just going to open this with Microsoft Excel. And we'll see it pop up. And there you go. Now you've got a pretty, very clean Excel spreadsheet that you can then use to uh, change the world. OK, so thanks for watching. This is a little bit longer video than I expected to make, but I think it goes pretty into detail about how you can use scraping tools like Data Miner to pull structured information off of a structured website. And hopefully this saves you some time uh, as you're out there researching the world and trying to pull information from the websites that you visit. Thanks for watching and good luck.